Hello! In this video, I'm going to go over all of the IELTS band scores. This includes the band scores for listening, reading, speaking, and writing. So if you have interest in knowing about the IELTS band scores, this video is perfect for you. Well, let's start with the easiest one first, the listening band scores. As you can see on the next page, it's very simple. There's one chart and it's the same for academic in general because both do the same test. So let's have a look at that now. Well, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. If you get 39 to 40 correct, well, that's a band score 9. If you get 11 to 12 correct, that's only a band score 4. A very popular score is around 26 to 31, and you can see 30 to 31 is a 7, 26 to 29 is a 6.5. Now for the reading band scores, it does change a little bit depending on whether you're doing academic or general. So let's have a look at that now. Let's start by looking at the academic reading scores. Uh, for 40 to 39, you get a band 9. And all the way down to 5 to 4 correct answers, it's a 2.5. And again, most people are around 27 to 30. So you can see that's where the 7 to 6.5 band is. And moving on to general, you can see that you do need to get more correct to get a higher band score. Starting right at the top, to get a band score 9 here, you need to get everything correct. And you can see the 7 to 6.5 range, it's a little bit higher. So when you're doing the practice test, you can see what band score you're in by checking how many correct answers you have. Now let's go into detail of how your score is calculated for speaking and writing. First, let's go over how you're scored. It's an average of four categories, which I'll go into more detail later. So you're given a score one to nine for each category. Now, the score is rounded up at 0.75, and the score is rounded down to 0.5. And on the next slide, I'll show you an example. So an example of this would be, if you've got a score of 6665, well, your score would round up to 6. But if you got a score of 6655, then your score would be 5.5. Now, some people wonder if they get like higher in one category. For example, like if you got a 7655, well, the average is still 6. All right, let's go into a little more detail about those band scores, starting with speaking. There are public band descriptors online, and I will show you what a band 6 looks like for speaking. This will give you a better idea of what examiners are looking for when you're doing the speaking test. The first category is fluency and coherence. This is what you can expect at level 6 or band 6. Uh, the candidate is willing to speak at length, though may lose coherence at times due to occasional repetition, self-correction, or hesitation. This means your ability to keep talking. And you need to use a range of connectives and discourse markers, but not always appropriately. This is using things like however, although, basically connecting your ideas so that you are easy to listen to. Next, let's have a look at lexical range and accuracy. Um, this is what it looks like at a band six. And again, you have a wide enough vocabulary to discuss topics at length and make meaning clear in spite of some inappropriacy. So you don't have to be perfect here, but you do have to be able to talk about a topic fairly well, and also you need to paraphrase successfully. This means kind of restating or explaining in more detail a point that you're making. Next, we have grammatical range and accuracy. And again, this is what you see at a band six. Um, you need to use a mix of simple and complex structures but with limited flexibility. So you do have to try to use a range of different grammar to get up to six, but you don't have to be perfect. As you can see, you may make frequent mistakes with complex structures, but they don't interrupt comprehension. So basically someone can understand what you're saying. And for a band six of pronunciation, you need to use a range of pronunciation features with mixed control. Um, this means like basically able to connect sounds and you know you can show some effective use of features but this is not sustained again you don't have to be perfect but you do need to have bits of speaking where your pronunciation 
is okay, and you can be generally understood throughout, though mispronunciation of individual words or sounds reduces clarity at times. This means your pronunciation might cause a little bit of confusion or a little lack of clarity. So that's what you can expect at Pronunciation Band 6. Okay, now let's have a look at those writing band scores and what you can expect. And again, I'll go into detail of what a band 6 is for each category. Well, let's start with task achievement by first looking at uh, task 2 achievement for general and academic. And this is where you need to address all the parts of the task, although some parts may be more fully covered than others. You need to present a relevant position, although conclusions may become unclear or repetitive. And you need to present relevant main ideas, but some may be inadequately developed or unclear. So basically, you need to cover everything, but you might not do so in the most clear fashion. But if you generally answer the question, you can expect a 6 for here. Now for task achievement for task 1 academic, in general, it's a bit different. So for both, addresses the requirements of the task. That doesn't matter whether it's academic or general. But now it's a little specific. For academic, you present an overview with information appropriately selected. So you don't need an overview for the general writing, but you do for academic, and it's very important. For the general training, that's a little different, presents a purpose that is generally clear. They may be inconsistencies in tone. This comes back to the formal and informal and the choice of words you use, but again, this is specific to the general training letter. And for both, you present and adequately highlight key features and bullet points, but there may be some irrelevant or inappropriate or inaccurate information. So that's what you can expect for the task one academic and general task achievement. Now let's move on to talk about coherence and cohesion. This is the same for both tasks and academic and general. Basically you arrange information and ideas coherently and there's a clear overall progression. So you'll see more about this because you use cohesive devices effectively. But there may be some lack of cohesion between sentences, and it might be a bit mechanical. This means using but all the time, or so all the time. And you may not always use referencing clearly or appropriately. So this is when you refer back to a past idea, often using a pronoun like he or it. And most important is using paragraphing, but not always logically. So you do use paragraphing, but not always logically. And you need to get all of these points to get a band 6 here. Moving on to lexical range and accuracy, um, you need to use an adequate range of vocabulary for the task. This means you don't have to be very technical, but again, you can be understood throughout. You do use some less common vocabulary, but with some inaccuracy, so you're not always correct. And you do make some errors with spelling or word formation, but it doesn't impede or doesn't block the communication to the examiner reading it. And for grammatical range and accuracy, again, it's the same whether it's academic or general or task two or task one. Um, for band six, you need to use a mix of simple and complex sentences. Um, you do make some errors in grammar and punctuation, but they rarely reduce communication. So basically, you need to use a fairly good range of grammar, but you don't have to be perfect to get a band 6. Okay, so that's a basic overview of how band scores work on an IELTS test. I hope you found that useful, and good luck on your next IELTS test.